you are the founder and CEO of BioViva. So welcome to Modern Health Spain and thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. So can you tell us a little bit about what originally got you interested in aging and curing the diseases of aging? Yeah, so in 2013, my son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and I had spent two years volunteering for a project uh, that was the education for the use of stem cells. And I had learned about all this fabulous uh, use of stem cells in regenerative medicine. I had met some uh, epigeneticists. Uh, they study the how genes code for proteins, for instance, why your nose looks different than your toes and why stem cells have the ability to regenerate and other cells do not. So I became really interested in the genetic side during those two years. But when my son was diagnosed, I realized uh, that these technologies were not translating to humans, mm -hmm. that people die every day, um, regardless of all this fabulous research and development that we have in regenerative medicine. So um, my goal was to find genetic cures for kids and to become an advocate of a company who would push forward these treatments for children, um, getting them off death row. And um, I, I just, I ran into an incredible conference called the, the SENS conference. It was Aubrey de Grey's conference in Europe. It was in 2013, it was some months after my son was diagnosed. And I went there because they had the professor of genetics of Harvard, um, George Church speaking there. And I thought, well, this gives me an opportunity to talk to um, people top in their field uh, to find out how we could cure childhood disease through genetics. I learned about aging. I learned that almost, uh, well, every gene therapy that BioViva looks at to treat biological aging will also treat a childhood disease. And that was just fantastic because what I learned about aging is there's over 100,000 people that die every day that could be candidates to try therapeutics to spearhead a new tomorrow for everyone else. And um, I think that most of those people would agree to participate in that type of use of technology. Uh, certainly we see that in in the world today, people are opting for really uh, bad drugs that cost a lot of money at the end of life uh, to eke out maybe a week more of life. Whereas this type of medicine, what I call best choice medicine, um, has shown more evidence in basic research than all of these drugs combined. I mean, they would be the most powerful drugs on the planet outside of antibiotics immunizations. So, um, I thought, let, let's look at tackling aging. It's ethical, it's a mandate. We have a booming aging population. And, and then that was the beginning of, of BioViva. Interesting, yes. So taking a step back, what is your, do you have a theory of aging? What, what, do you think about why we age and, and what's your kind of feeling for that? Yeah, well, I mean, aging is cellular degeneration over time. So it's, it's, it is wear and tear, it, it's a multitude of things. It's the inability for the cell to clear the damage uh, that accumulates and the loss of function. So when we look at uh, treating biological aging with uh, gene therapy, we look at the hallmarks of aging. So we're looking vastly at these debatable ha hallmarks of aging um, that drive uh, inflammation and metabolic disorder and things like that as we age. Um, and so we look at, you know, telomere attrition, mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular senescence, um, intra and extracellular communication issues. And um, by looking at these, these give us the initial targets uh, in which to go after with uh, gene therapies. Right. Interesting. Do, do you see aging as, so it's an accumulative damage or do you see it as being kind of uh, programmed, like we're programmed to get older? It's a disease. I mean, you know, the thing is you can debate like, you know, of course, of course it's a programmed process or it's a, it's a lack of, of, of afterthought of programming evolution. You know, we, tr we, we always talk about it like it's a living thing, but it's really a random throw of the dice, right? Mm -hmm. So some species can reverse their aging, very few, like the immortal jellyfish. Some species live in an 
immensely long time, like, you know, the bowhead well or some, some trees that we see. And some species live an incredibly short period of time. And for their re reproductive fitness, it makes sense. Um, but, you know, humans are, are beyond that. Um, we're actually at the state of uh, development as a species where we keep people who are very sick alive and even in the gene pool. So we have a mandate to, to shore up these issues. So regardless of where you think it is, um, your genes have the biggest impact uh, outside of sanitation and infectious disease on how you becoming the age of 10 when you're born. But then your genes have everything to do with you not living past, you know, 105, right? Mm -hmm. So the genes are subsequently highly crucial for health span. Lifestyle um, can give you the best uh, low hanging fruit for the middle of life. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, your genes are, uh, whether you want to call it programmed or, or set or evolutionarily um, purposed to care about reproduction and then slowly um, the organisms dies, however you want to say that. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, got it. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.